Hi, today I'm going to talk about the five types of resistant starch and how they might help you to try to lose weight. And it's coming right up. Starches, things like oat and beans and wheat and rice, are called polysaccharides. And that means that they're long chains of glucose, which is a type of sugar. And they come arranged in two main forms, one called amylopectin, which is about 70% in the human diet, and the other type is amylose, which is about 30%. The starches are usually classified into three different types. Rapidly digested starch, which means that the glucose is released within about 20 minutes of eating. Then there's slowly digested starch, which is slower than 20 minutes, and then resistant starch, which is not broken down at all. And this replaces the old classification of carbohydrates, which was complex versus simple carbohydrates. And the old classification was based on how long those chains of glucose were. If it was a simple carbohydrate, it was one or two molecules, and it was thought that that would lead to a very quick rise in glucose. And a complex carbohydrate, which is longer chains, like the amylose and amylopectin, were thought to be digested slower, but it turns out not to be true because many, many of these uh, long chains, that is complex carbohydrates, actually are rapidly digested and, and therefore cause a very quick spike. So that old classification wasn't useful because it's really based on a chemical composition of the starch and is not based on the human physiologic response, which is why we use these different terms. Amylopectin has a different structure than amylose. So amylopectin is more water soluble and makes it easier to be degraded by enzymes called amylases. The uh, amylopectin comes in three different types. Amylopectin A, which is found in wheat and is the most easily digested. Uh, amylopectin C is the hardest to digest, and those are found in things like beans. Amylopectin B, which is found in potatoes and bananas, is sort of intermediate between the two. Amylose, with its helical structure, which is straight, is much harder to digest and therefore leads to a much slower rise in the glucose and the insulin. And in this study, for example, you see that this is true in both normal um, people and also hyperinsulinemic uh, people. If they eat more amylose compared to amylopectin, the amount of insulin that is released is much less, even though the amount of carbohydrate is the same. And as we've seen, the speed of the digestion is critically important to how much glucose and insulin released. There's actually six major forms of uh, ways that can be influence the, uh, the carbohydrate from uh, what you eat to how quick the glucose rises. So the first is, as we've discussed, the amylopectin to amylose ratio and how much resistance starch there is. Uh, second is the particle size. That is, if you have much larger particles, they tend to be digested much slower. If you have something which is grind up and very small, it can be digested very quickly. So, uh, for example, if you have uh, steel cut oats versus very finely milled instant oats, there's a difference because the particle size is smaller. The third is a cell wall integrity. So if you have the uh, carbohydrate within uh, an intact cell wall, it can't be digested. That's why fiber is often considered an indigestible carbohydrate. If you break down that cell wall by taking wheat, for example, and grinding it very, very fine into a dust, it gives it a, a lot of opportunity for the amylases, those enzymes in our body to break it down, leading to an extremely rapid rise in blood glucose. Compared of this finely machine grade uh, industrially processed wheat to say stone ground wheat, and you find that the, the cell wall integrity is more intact and therefore a slower rise. Number four is if you eat the fats uh, and proteins along with the carbohydrates. And I did a whole YouTube video uh, describing why food order matters and why eating the carbs last might be more beneficial. Uh, number five is the presence of acidic foods, things such as vinegar, 
and other uh, fermented foods can influence the speed at which it's digested by influencing the amount of amylases. And again, I did a whole YouTube video on that if you want to check that out. And number six is something called phenolics, which we may address in another video. When phenolics are uh, antioxidants, they're phytochemicals, so they're found uh, from plants. And they're things called like phenolic acid and flavonoids and lignans. And they modulate carbohydrate digestion and glucose absorption by also inhibiting, inhibiting these amylases that break down the carbohydrate. And um, they all can also influence the intestinal glucose transporter. So by, by inhibiting the amylases, it makes the absorption uh, much slower. And certain studies have shown that uh, perhaps the most important factors could be the amount of uh, fiber and also the uh, presence of uh, phenolics. So what about resistant starch? Because resistant starch is not digested at all. And by taking more resistant starch, you might be able to influence that how much carbohydrate you can take and reduce it. And there's five different types of resistant starch. Because they don't get digested at all, it goes to the colon and the carbohydrate then gets acted on by the uh, gut microbiome. So those bacteria that are in the colon start to break it down into things such as short chain fatty acid or SF, uh, sorry, SCFA. And that is important because that has other influences. It stimulates, for example, GLP-1, which is a hormone which uh, may promote satiety and decrease gastric emptying, and also peptide YY, which promotes satiety. So this fiber, even though there is no um, absorption, the carbohydrate goes straight through us, doesn't get absorbed, can still make us feel more full and make us want to stop eating. And this will have an influence in terms of glucose sensitivity and decreasing the amount of insulin released. The, the, the first type of resistant starch is type 1 resistant starch, which is that the carbohydrate is trapped within a physical barrier, um, or a, uh, and that usually is a, an intact cell wall. Because it is contained within that cell wall, or perhaps a protein matrix, therefore the digestive enzymes like the amylases can't get at it because they're physically blocked. The fiber is the most uh, classic example of that, where the carbohydrate is trapped within the intact cell wall, and therefore you can't do it. You can release the carbohydrate by uh, industrial processes such as grinding, but also milling. Sometimes chewing can also uh, release that. Um, so if you uh, look at those examples like uh, machine ground flour versus uh, stone ground flour or steel cut oats versus instant oats, there's clearly a difference when it comes to the effect on our bodies, even though the carbohydrate is the same. The second type of starch is called high amylose starch. And because the amylose is digested, slower, you can modify, mostly genetically, the uh, corn and sometimes wheat to have a much higher amylose concentration. It's called HAM or high amylose uh, maize. Um, that's not very common, however. Uh, the other way to look at it is to look at the different varieties. And here they've done some, um, some uh, studies on rice. And certain types of rice are much higher in amylose than others. The highest variety rice is uh, basmati rice, as well as jasmine, and they're about 30%, so on par with wheat. But the uh, sticky rice, or glutinous rice, has almost 0% amylose. It's mostly almost all amylopectin. And in between is the short grain rice, which is about 10 to 20%. The other thing that is very high in amylose are unripened potatoes, unripened bananas, maybe uh, baby potatoes as well. Um, there the starches are very uh, difficult to digest. The third type of resistant starch, or type 3 resistant starch, is uh, cooking and then cooling starches. And this is very interesting because heating the starches actually causes gelatinization, which is turning it into a more liquid form. So cold rice, for example, is very crunchy because it's, it's uh, crystal, and then as it's more liquid, it's smoother and softer and much easier to eat. 
as that rice cools, uh, it forms a new crystal structure in a process called retrogradation. So you may also see that term retrograded starch. And this makes the starch more stable and again, less susceptible to amylase. And again, if you uh, the amylase can't break down the starch, it can't get absorbed. So therefore the rise in glucose is much slower than if you had just regular rice. So cooked and then cooled rice uh, can be compared in this study, for example, uh, they, they found that there was a small but significant uh, decrease in the rise in glucose when you had uh, type 3 resistant starch. Potatoes, on the other hand, if you were to cook them, cool them, and then reheat them, uh, most of that starch just goes back into its normal structure, so it doesn't have any effect. But the good thing about potatoes is that you can eat them cold. So if you cook them and then cool them and then eat them cold, such as with potato salad, for example, then again, you can take advantage of this resistant starch. So uh, one study, for example, showed that if you ate uh, potato salad, where you also had some vinegar dressing, which may have played an effect, you could actually reduce the glycemic index by a whopping 41% compared to regular potatoes and uh, reduce the insulin by 31%. So that's a very interesting way to modify uh, the starch, which is called retrogradation or type 3 resistant starch. Type 4 is a chemically modified starch, and this is not recommended because it's highly processed. What they do is they use uh, chemicals to do things like cross-linking, etherization, esterification, and just by hearing the name, you know that that's probably not something you want to eat. And type 5 is the uh, complex of the starch and lipid, where the fat acts as a physical barrier separating uh, the amylase and the starch and therefore uh, preventing the quick breakdown. So uh, this has not been studied well, so there's not a lot of evidence. However, there is a small study, for example, where they looked at stir-fried rice in oil versus stir-fried rice without oil, and the oil acts as a physical barrier to make it uh, easier to uh, have. So those are the different types of resistant starch. There's five different types, and it's very important that all starches are not the same. There's those six different ways that you can modify it. So again, it's not the carbohydrate necessarily because all of these have the same amount of carbohydrate, but what you, what, what you do to the carbohydrate, whether you change it into a more resistant form or you add things like proteins or fats or vinegars or you uh, keep it in a more whole form, uh, that, that can really influence the amount of uh, the, the, how quickly the, the uh, glucose rises and therefore the amount of insulin produced and it's that hormone insulin which is driving weight gain. I hope you've learned something. I'll see you next week.